All right, let's start creating our sword. Go up to File, and we're going to create a new project. We're going to just call it Maya Sword Tutorial. I'm just going to click New. We'll just call it Maya Sword Tutorial. And I'm going to save this directly on my desktop. So I'm just going to click Desktop, click Select, and it's just on the desktop. Click Accept. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to create a cube. Now, first, before I create this cube, I'm going to show you something here. If I go into Polygon Primitives, this is how it looks for you. If you were to create a box and you'd have this interactive, you kind of have an interaction on how you create your box. You know, you have to drag it out to set the width and then drag it up to set the height. One press delete. Another way you can uh, make that a lot faster is go into your create, go to polygon primitives, come down here and uncheck interactive creation. Now with that unchecked, it's just going to drop this box into the seam when I click this button. So I'm just going to click the button. You see I have a very tiny box there. Right click over the box, select object mode, make sure I'm in object mode. And I'm going to make sure I have the box selected by mousing over it. Now there's a couple different ways we can scale this up. We can come over here to our scale settings and we can hold our left mouse button and kind of drag over the scaling of X, Y, and Z. And I don't know, I could enter in a value of like 20 and press enter. And that kind of makes it pretty big. I'm going to hit control Z. Another way I can do it is I can come over here to the scale X, Y, Z. Then I can mouse over the render window, hold down my middle mouse button, and kind of just drag it to the right and that's another way I can scale it less accurate you know because you have those point numbers in there that's yet another way you can scale it and then I'm hit control Z to go back and yet another way to scale this object is you could use your scale tool I'll press R on my keyboard and if you see there's the scale tool has it's just like the move tool that we discussed earlier you know you have you can scale it on the Y I could scale it on the X or I could scale it on the Z. I could scale it on the both the Z and the X. You can kind of figure that out. It's pretty simple to understand. Or you can click, there is a middle box here. I'm gonna zoom in real close. See how there's this middle box here? If I click that one, naturally it's gonna be on the X, the X, Z, and Y. So it's gonna do all three. So I could click that one, drag out. And that's usually the way I go about doing it. If I don't need a specific size, I'll drag it out that way. Now before I drag this up, we're going to make a quick change to this box. As you can see, just looking at it, it's just a solid poly on each side. There's only a single poly, and I kind of want us to have more than that so we have more polys to work with when we're creating our sword. So why don't we come over here to the poly cube? So we want the channel box layer editor open. If this window is not open, you just come over here to the very far button, and you want to click it. It's the, you can mouse over it and it'll say show hide channel box. So I'm going to want to click that and this window should pop up. And we want to come down here in the inputs go ahead and drop this down. Now this is the initial cube that we dropped into the scene. This is in our history that we have this poly cube one and it has subdivisions width, height, and depth of one. So your width, your height, and your depth of one. Now we, we that's only one face per side and we want three so I'm just gonna again just like with the scale you can left mouse click over these three press three press enter and that will give you three on each side I'm gonna go ahead and start shaping this but before we do let's go ahead and get it off of the ground and it doesn't have to be perfect you can just go ahead and drag it up some and that's fine uh, you can also use snap to grid so I'm gonna choose snap and I can snap this up one and that'll get me above but let's go ahead and select vertex and uh, we want to go ahead and line these bottom ones up with the ground floor. An easy way to do that is to just select all the ones on the bottom. Remember, I went to right click, vertex, and then I marquee selected all of them. I'm going to mouse around my object to make sure I only have the bottom one selected. And now I can just drag those down and they will snap directly to the ground. See how that worked out? It's a very easy way to handle that. So we're going to start creating, we're going to have a hilt here. So this is going to be like just a hilt object, you know, kind of where the handle is. So let's go ahead and start setting that up. So a hilt is going to be kind of round. So we want the person to be able to grab it. So I'm going to press spacebar, and it's going to get me my four view. And then I'm going to come over here to the top view. It'll stay right here top. Mouse over that and press spacebar, and then kind of zoom out a bit. And I'm going to select the ones on the left i can't tell my left and my right right now and the ones on the right and i'm just going to press r on my keyboard and i'm going to scale those in just using this tool here 
just to kind of get a more rounded shape. I'm press W and I'm going to move them down. Whoops, I forgot this turn off snap to grid. So if yours was bouncing around like that, come over here and uncheck that snap to grids. And we can just move these down. Now make sure you're selecting both the ones on the left and the right. We will cover a little bit of mirroring geometry, but not right now. So just make sure you have both those sides selected before you start moving. Now I'm going to marquee select the ones on the bottom. And I'm pretty much going to do the same thing. In fact, we could have done it at the same time we did this one. But again, it, it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to hold down marquee, select this one. Hold down shift and marquee over the other side. Make sure both are selected. I'm going to go ahead and scale these down. Then we're going to press W, get our move tool, and scale these up. Now, you see how what I was saying about learning those hotkeys W, E, and R? Ha imagine how annoying it would be because we're moving these vertices each, and we have to come over here and keep clicking it. So make sure you memorize those W, E, and R keys. You'll be able to work a lot faster. So we have a good shape here. It's a good cylinder. We'll press spacebar and come back over to the perspective view. Press spacebar again. And there's our handle. Now, it kind of looks like if we were... Again, we're going to be making this very large and scaling down. If we were to look at this and think, hmm, looks a little fat and not long enough. So why don't we go ahead and fix that? So we'll we'll go to object mode. So right click on the object, go to object mode, select the object, and we're going to just scale it. We want to scale it on the Z and the X. We're going to make it thinner. So I'm going to select this bottom plane and go ahead and scale that down. See, that was pretty easy. Now looking at this, when we move, when we snap those vertices to the ground. We kind of messed up our topology a bit, so we're going to right click. We're going to go to the edges, and we're going to double click on any one of the edges. And you'll notice by double clicking on it, it selected all the edges around in a circle. Yet another way to do that is I could select one edge, hold down shift, and double click on an edge directly next to it. And that's another way to do it. And I can press W, but I also kind of want to move these ones at the same time, so I'll just go ahead and double click that by holding down the shift key. And I'll go ahead and move these down. Just kind of make it a little bit more uniform, just cleaning up my topology a bit. Now, again, this has to do a bit with topology, which we'll cover in the future. We're just doing something very simple here. We're gonna come over here, right click over the object, and select faces, and then go ahead and select this middle one, and press delete on your keyboard. And come over here and select vertex. So right click over the object, select vertex release and we're going to select these four vertices on top now again in order to make sure i select them i want to make sure that the vertice is the vertex is red before i left click so i'm going to hold down shift i know i have this one selected i'm going to click and then i'm going to hover over this one click again and hover over this one and click again and i'm just going to move these up and then i'm going to kind of scale them out so we're kind of creating a base for our Hilt. I guess that's the hilt, the hand guard that's going to be before the blade. And I'm going to press R on my keyboard, and I'm just going to kind of scale this out and be a little creative. So I think that the blade would kind of, if you think about how a sword works, the blade is up above it, but it kind of goes through both the hand guard and the handle. It kind of goes through all the way into the handle. That's how they work. So I think this is, that's going to, how I'm going to set this up. I might thin it up a little bit as well. So maybe kind of go like that, make it the blade a bit thinner when we get to that stage and looking at this now we can go ahead and just create our blade from these edges that we just have here so we'll create the blade and then we'll use extrusion to create the handle around it just to teach you a couple new tools so right click go ahead and select edges so we're going to select the edges and we're going to choose hold on shift and go ahead and grab all the edges whoops and make sure you just get these edges on top. Another way I could have done it was kind of leveled myself off to where it's flat. And then I can hold down marquee with my left mouse button, select all the ones on top. You'll notice it kind of got some of the ones below it. I hold down control and marquee over the ones below it. Notice it deselected those. Remember control turns off the selection while shift turns it on. So that's just, you know, things to think about. We're going to use this uh, extrusion now, so I'm going to press W, and we're going to extrude these edges out in order to create the blade portion of our weapon. So we're going to use extrude. So let's come up here, and this is actually the extrude button for it. Another way you can do it is you can go into uh, Edit Mesh, and you'll notice over here under the edge, they're each divided into sections. you got vertex, edge, face, and curve. 
I'll go over edge and I can also click extrude here. So that's what I'm going to do. Mm. I can kind of see like the angle. If I were to extrude now, you see how it's kind of pointing that way? Well, what we can do is we can, you can see this little thing next to it. If you can see that it's right next to the widget is this little button. If I click that, you'll notice that it kind of went to world. So instead of being working with the local, it's now moving on the world. You'll notice the widget moves if I turn that. So I'm going to turn that on so this is facing the right direction. Then I'm going to go ahead and drag it up. And I think that's probably about as far as I want to go because I want to create the handle. Why don't we go ahead and go all the way up and we'll just go ahead and create the whole length of the sword. So however long you want to make your sword, I'm just going to make that looks pretty good. It's a really long sword. But uh, we'll clean up this top here in a minute. So let's go ahead and come down here and let's take a look at how we can get a hilt out of this geometry that we already have. I'm going to right click on the object and I'm going to just select object mode. Not that I really had to and I'm going to click on the object. So now we just have the object selected. We're going to use another tool and it's called the split selected edge ring and you probably don't have this on your options here. I always put this option on here because I use this so much. You can go up here to your mesh tools and drop down and we can go to insert edge loop tool. What I want you to do is just hold down control and shift and you can click on it and that's going to edit. I know I told you before that you had to hold down control and shift and drag it over to your bar but it's the insert edge loop tool. I was wrong on that. You just have to click on it and it'll go to the bar. I found that out the other day. I was like oh well okay. But I'm going to right click and delete this one. So just get this on your bar. So it's the insert edge loop tool. We're going to select that. Now it says click drag on edges. So what I want to do is just come over here and first I want to make sure my tool settings are correct. So you can always check out the settings for this tool over here. And just click on your tool settings. Another way you can open up the tool settings is by showing and hiding your tool settings from the upper right hand corner. And I don't want multiple edge loops. I want relative distance from edge so I can choose where this loop of edges is going to go. And now I have to decide how wide I want this hilt to be. So I'm going to click on an edge on the blade and I'm just going to select the location I guess probably right about here looks good to me and for the width and I'm just going to release. Now I have a new set of polygons. What this basically did was just add a ring of edges and it split this these polygon faces into two different polygons now. Now don't click again on here if you do hit Control Z, but because what you have to do is anytime this tool is active, it is active until you select the different tool. So if you use this tool, I what I always do is I just hit W, and that puts me in my move tool. So it, I make sure that that's now deactive because now my move tool is activated. All right, now as you move forward, you always want to stop every now and again and go ahead and save your progress. So at various stages as you're modeling, think about it, keep it in the back of your head. Okay, now should be a good time to save because I'm getting ready to do something big to the model or make some kind of change that may not actually turn out the way I want it to down the road. So you save, that way you can always come back to that step. So I'm going to come up here to File, click Save Scene As. And I'm going to use a naming structure that I prefer to use. But first I want to choose the type of file that I'm going to save it as. Now Maya has two different types. It has Maya ASCII, which is readable by humans. So if I were to save it, I could open it up in a text editor and actually read the information that's saved. And it also has my, Maya binary, which is computer language. So my file saving structure is I like to put the date. So it is 06. 03-2014, so it's June the 3rd, 2014. Then I put a little dash, and I set the time, but I always set it in military time. So 11:31 would be 11:12:13, so that would be 23:31. So it's 23:31, and then I set an underscore, and I kind of give a description of where I'm at with my object. So I'm say I'm sword shaping. I'm shaping my sword and then I'm going to underscore one more time and this is just me. You could probably save just like that. I'm going to go ahead and call this video end 05. So this is the last, this is the end of the video for video 5 in this series. And then I'm going to come over here and just click save as. In the next lesson we'll continue to shape our sword.